Um, Hi, I'm introducing Will Garrison. If you can tell us a little about yourself, Will. Um, I'm a musician. I live from New York City. I lived here all my life. And um, about eight years ago, I got involved with um, the movement against judicial corruption in New York. And um, because of a, of a case that I was in, a civil case. And I got involved with a community of people who were interested in, in uh, um, mitigating uh, judicial corruption in New York. And about uh, three years ago, a fellow named Sonny Shu came and uh, gave me a call. And, and who is Sonny Shu? Sonny Shu was a Chinese gentleman, was a Chinese gentleman who uh, lived in Queens. He was a computer wizard. He, he programmed computers. He also took them apart and, and dealt with the hardware. Uh, he had a business. Um, he was trying to put together a, a Chinese language social network like Facebook kind of a thing. And um, he, about 10 years ago, uh, he was uh, at home and the, the do there was a knock on the door. Some uh, guy came to the door and said that his house was now uh, the property of of a new owner and that this guy was coming to check out the house for the new owner and Sonny said what well, was never for sale and it turns out that this uh, guy at the door was part of a mortgage fraud ring that had forged the deed in the name of uh, Sonny's brother um, Sonny pursued it and um, established that this was a, so a forgery the fraudsters several people were arrested and convicted um, and Sonny thought that was the end of it, but eventually uh, he got a foreclosure notice from the bank saying that he wasn't paying. He said, I am sending you the checks. Uh, but they were saying, well, your mortgage is no longer the operative mortgage. The operative mortgage is the one that had been made by these fraudsters. Sonny could not believe it. He went to the judge, but the judge, uh, who was Joseph Golia, seemed to be in league with the fraudsters and would not have... And, and this, is, this judge is in what court? Uh, I think he's retired now. He's the Sup a Supreme Court judge, uh, New York Supreme, uh, in Queens. In Queens, okay. Yeah, and he's, in fact, at the time he was the president of the Association of Supreme Court Justices of New York. So a very important guy. Uh, Sonny went to him and um, the judge simply would not allow the evidence of the, of the arrest and the conviction of the fraudsters into the record and continued to maintain that the mortgage company was correct in... Uh, and taking away Sonny's house. Sonny fought it for 10 years. Uh, about three years ago, before, right before he, he met, when came to me, Sonny was uh, abducted by two district attorney cops from the courthouse. He was called to the courthouse, uh, taken uh, by two cops who showed their badge and guns and put him in a car and drove him to a room at the district attorney's uh, office, the Queens DA's office. Um, so I guess I guess it, these were not like organized crime guys pretending to be cops. No, no, they were they were uh, the bureau DA bureau cops from the from the NY from the DA bureau. Because they actually went to the DA's office yes, too, right? In okay. Back, they they went in through a back door to a room. They locked the door and they basically uh, intimidated and threatened Sonny. For according to Sonny, we only have this by him. What we do know as a fact is that he was detained. We've never gotten a reason for the detention. We've never been able to find out who ordered the detention. But according to Sonny, Sonny was obviously terrorized when he came out of that, and he said that he had been uh, told by these cops that if he didn't, that if he continued to uh, fight this mortgage case, um, and if, or if he went to the media or the uh, authorities, he would be killed. And uh, he said also he, if he continued to say anything uh, bad about Judge Golia, he would be killed. So. Sonny, at that point, came to me and wanted me to help him go to the FBI, and we did. We met with uh, Rachel Rojas, special supervising agent Rachel Rojas, uh, who's in the mortgage fraud department of the uh, New York uh, FBI. And we spent a while with her. He gave her lots of, uh, subsequent to the, um, uh, to the meeting, uh, she asked him for a lot of documentation. He sent her hundreds of pages of do documentation on the mortgage fraud. And um, they acknowledged receipt. He had a, an email correspondence with her in which he said, I want you to understand that I'm asking very specifically for witness protection because I've been threatened by a judge and cops and I think I'm going to be killed. And she just wrote back, be careful. 
then Sonny decided to look into the financial disclosure forms of Judge Golia. And, and Golia, how do you spell that? G-O-L-I-A. And you say he's retired now? I believe he is, yeah. Okay. And he was with State Supreme Court, Queens County. Before. That's right, yeah. And um, so Sonny thought the only way I can, that he could get rid of this, get this judge off the case and get a fair hearing was to show that this judge was dishonest. And he figured that if he were so dishonest to do what he was doing in the case, that he would also be the kind of person who might lie, cheat on his uh, financial disclosures. So sure enough, Sonny, who was very adept at searches, uh, looked through you know, various databases and found a number of things, including a uh, ownership of a house in Queens, I mean in uh, Breezy Point, New York, a, a beach house, which was even mentioned in a magazine article as belonging to Judge Golia. Um, but that was not mentioned on the financial disclosure form, as were, I think, 12 other instances of uh, what Sonny felt were uh, possessions of, of, of the judge that were not listed. So this financial disclosure form, the judge has to list all his assets and liabilities? Everything over $1,000. Oh, okay. So and, certainly and, and uh, a home. And his wife. And, and what do you think this house was worth? Was worth? Uh, I mean... I'm, I'm really guessing, but uh, I can't imagine it was less than 500000 and probably more like a million or, or okay. more. Okay. You know? Fine. I mean, it's, it's a, a, pri a prime... Certainly a lot more than a thousand, right? It's a, yes, it's a, it's a gated community in, in a, on a fancy beach uh, town, uh, you know, half an hour from New York City, so it's a very desirable uh, place. So, um, anyway, that was one, that's the only one that I knew of. We went to the press, we went to Jim, um, ABC News uh, investigative reporter who was very interested in the case, and he said, he said, Sonny, I need you to find out more about Judge Golia uh, before we can do it. Jim Hoffer, and we'll do a story on this if you can get us more information. So Sonny went back, and he filed a complaint. Um, the people at the, at the OCA in the Ethics Department now the OCA, is that the Office, Office of Court, of Court Administration? Administration? Okay. They felt that, that Sonny's complaint had enough merit that they didn't tell him to go to hell. They, they wrote a letter to the judge. And, uh, I mean, obviously, if, if Sonny had said this judge owns a golden castle and a unicorn farm, they would have said, you know, thank you very much. But his, his uh, the apparent discrepancies that he pointed out seemed to have enough merit that they actually wrote a letter to the judge that said, we need a, a uh, amended form from you. And that's the judge's last chance under New York law. Any public official who, who fills out a financial disclosure form, they get one chance. And basically they don't say, well, there's this house in Greasy Point that you didn't mention, or this car, or this boat. They just say, someone, we become aware of some possible discrepancies, can you please clear this up? And they don't tell who it was that asked either. So, so Sonny, uh, asked this and, and we were supposed to get a response within a week. It took four months, but he finally got a response from uh, Judge Golia, which was basically a letter saying, I stand by what I said. He said, the only thing that I can think of that may have been neglected was a vacant lot in Queens, but I think it's worth less than $1,000 for what that's worth. Um, Sonny, who was a very feisty little fellow, um, he immediately said, I've got him. I've got enough information now, evidence, to put Judge Golia in jail. He said that in front of the OCA people at the Ethics Department, and I said, Sonny, shut up. Let's get out of here. And we had lunch. This was the June 23rd of 2010. Um, I told him to be careful because it was now known that he had information against Judge Golia. He said to be careful. Three days later, I get a call from uh, an officer, Ramos, from the uh, New York Hospital in, in Queens, and he says, we found your friend's phone. He, it seems like his name is Sonny Shu. He suffered from massive head trauma, and he's in, he's in, he was in a coma. He was brought to the hospital. Could you come to the hospital and identify him and, and see him? So me and a, and a doctor friend of ours, Sherry Brabowski, went to the hospital. And we got there, and the doctor said, uh, the doctor's name was Zishan Ahmed, and he said, we just covered him up. We realized that he had just died. It was a complete, terrible shock to us. 
and he was lying <coughs> on a gurney, and uh, there was blood coming out of his mouth. And I, we asked the doctor about the head trauma, and the doctor said, oh, there was no head trauma. I said, well, we were both told by the cop that, you know, that met him at the hospital that there was head trauma. And he said, well, he was mistaken. There's no head trauma. We said, are you absolutely sure? He said, we took a CAT scan. It showed that there was not even the tiniest fracture, or a CAT scan would show the, the slightest uh, minute fracture in the skull, and there was none. And they said, that, the quote, not a scratch, not a lump, not a bump on his skull. He died of an aneurysm. So we were somewhat relieved. We, had, we took the doctor aside, the young doctor, and we said, listen, you know, he had been threatened. He had made a video. I, for, I failed to mention that we had made a video of Sonny where he said, I'm thinking I'm, I might be killed, and if I am killed, it will be by Judge Golia and these two cops that uh, abducted me. And um, he put that up on YouTube. And we told the, the doctor about that and said, so if, if there's any sense that there could be foul play here, please let us know. He stood by his story and said, not a scratch. So we went, we called the police and said, we'd like to make a statement because this fellow, Sonny, our friend Sonny, had been threatened. And when we told the captain of the 109th precinct that there was a video on YouTube, he freaked out. <coughs> he yelled, what do you mean there's a video? What are you talking about? Why would he make a video? He said, well, he was frightened he would be killed. Well, we went home. And unbeknownst to us, at 5 o'clock, we found out later through a FOIA request that 5 o'clock in the morning, several hours after he died, two policemen came in to the hospital and illegally removed his body from the hospital. It took them three tries, but eventually, apparently, phone calls were made and the medical examiner accepted the body. The captain of the police department sent a letter to the medical examiner. Again, we're talking seven, eight hours after the death. Well, at this point, probably about 10 hours after death. And they said, our detective squad has looked over the, uh, the death and we found that it's, there was no criminality. And there was a witness that saw him fall down. Um, the medical examiner uh, declared the death to be uh, an accident. And then I called the medical examiner <clears throat> and I said, Do you th what are the chances of a person falling down and hitting their heads exactly where an aneurysm occurred? And the doctor said that would probably not be possible. I said. Do you know anything about this witness? And he said no. And the, wet, the, the medical examiner changed his determination from accidental to undetermined, which requires a... Uh, and and he, put, he, he did a second autopsy, and the second autopsy changed his determination, um, and the, the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head with skull fractures and, bra skull fractures and brain <coughs> injuries, and uh, changed the manner of death to undetermined, and uh, Sonny's was, body was then uh, cremated at the request of a person that had no relation to his family or friends. Uh, okay. So we now have the question, who murdered Sonny Shu? Yeah. And um, you said there's a, a number of um, articles on the internet about this, correct? Yes. And how do you spell Sonny Shu? Uh, uh, Sonny, S-U-N-N-Y, Shu, S-H-E-U. Okay. And you can find, uh, uh, there's a website sunnyshoe.blogspot.com and that will give you a whole recap of the story with links to all the document documentation the death certificate the letter from the police etc thank you very much thank you you can edit that down